welcome to Gardening at 58 North. In this video I'm going to be giving you guys an update on my sunflowers. I'll also be repotting them into larger pots and I'm also going to be sowing new plants. So these are the ones that I sowed previously. Um, you can see that in a previous video I've got the link in the description down below. As you can see some of them have become rather leggy, especially the Titan here. Now I wasn't expecting the Titan to become leggy. The Titan is supposed to be quite a strong plant. It's supposed to be one of the tallest plants. Um, but it's supposed to be a very strong stocky stem, so I was quite surprised with that. And the giraffe, which was supposed to be the very tall leggy one, uh, was supposed to get the highest height but I still have a thin stem, is actually quite a nice uh, kind of short length to it. So I was quite surprised with that. I thought it would be the other way around with Titan and giraffe, but it, that just sort of seems to be the way it went. So this might have become so leggy partly because of the heat of the propagator. I did have it quite warm just to get them to germinate, and they did germinate well apart from a couple of varieties, which I'll show you in a moment. And um, the heat of the propagator probably made this a bit too leggy. It should be okay from now on. And as the seed leaves are up here, I can actually bury all this stem. And as long as I bury the stem no higher than the, than the first seed leaves, then what will happen is it will send out new roots. So I can just plant this deeper in the soil and it will get rid of any leggy problems. So it's not a big issue if the seedlings are leggy at the beginning. If they're leggy late, later on when they've got lots of secondary leaves, then that can be a bit of a problem. But if it's just leggy up to the first set of of leaves then that's not an issue, I can just bury it deeper and that will solve that problem. So what well, the ones I haven't done well are the, is a variety called Wo. I haven't actually had a single one of them germinate, uh, I'm not sure why. They've all had the same treatment, um, same amount of water, same amount of heat in the propagator. So these might go back into the propagator actually just to see if I can get them to, to germinate, maybe they need a bit longer under the heat. Uh, even the Kong germinated because these seeds are quite old and only had two left. So one of them is germinated, that's pretty good. And another one that didn't do so well was Ruby. There's no germination in this one. However, there is actually 100% germination in this one. So a bit, uh, bit of a variation there. This again, I'll put back in the propagator, see if I can get it to germinate with a bit more heat and a bit more time in the propagator. So I'll pop, I'll um, repot these soon. Um, these smaller ones, such as the Ruby and the Kong here, they don't need uh, planting yet. They're actually quite small. They'll be happy in these pots for a bit longer. But the Titan definitely needs repotting. And so does the giraffe here. They're quite, uh, there's two of them in there, and even this one in here is going to outgrow that pretty quickly. So I'll also be planting some new seeds. I'm going to be using my old packet. This is the one from last year that I grew. Uh, I grew. Um, so the ones I'm choosing from uh, this packet for this year, I'm going to be choosing the Ross and Giant, just because that's a really big classic sunflower that a lot of people grow. One of the largest sunflowers, it's quite a good one. Um, I'll also be doing Red Sun because that's quite another, another large one and I do like to have some red colour as well, it's just a plain yellow. And I'm also going to be doing uh, Colour Parade. Now the reasons I haven't done these other three, um, I don't really like Teddy Bear, you can see there, I'll get a close up. Uh, it doesn't have like normal petals, it's just like lots of little, it's a bit more, looks a bit more like an African Marigold, I'm not so keen on that one so I'm not growing that. Pacino Gold, basically the same as Bo, it's very small dwarf with lots of flowers. So that I've got something very similar, and the Italian white, although it's nice to have some different colours, the Italian white is quite a small one again, and I'm wanting some really light, nice large plants to make a showy display. So I'll start off by planting up these, these old ones. So as I say, the Titans are in desperate need of uh, being repotted. So I'm going to be, have to be extremely careful with these because you can see how spindly the stems are. It's going to be very difficult to actually replant these without, without snapping the stems. So I'm going to be very gentle and I'm going to take everything quite slowly because the last thing I want to do is snap any of these stems because that will most likely kill the plant. Even though they can root along the stem, they can only redo that if they've still got some existing roots. If they snap off completely, the chance of it happening is pretty slim. So this is actually quite well stuck in and I can't pull unfortunately because the stems are so thin they will snap. So I've just managed to get that one out. I'm going to very carefully lay it down. I'm going to see if I can tease these out. This will cause quite a bit of disturbance to the roots, unfortunately, and they won't grow quite as tall because of this, but they definitely need repotting. The two of them together wouldn't be too good. That's one there. I'm going to put that as deep as I can in the pot and then bury as much of the stem as possible. As I said before, these will root along the stem and it will get rid of a lot of the leggy growth and it will be a much stronger plant because it has all the extra roots coming out of the stem. So the mix I'm putting it in now does have some perlite to help with the uh, structure of the soil. The original mix didn't have any perlite when I was just sowing the seeds because I find if a seed root hits a perlite, uh, 
a piece of perlite, it can kind of kill off that little root. Whereas if it happens on this you know, established plant, it might kill off the tip of a root if it's unlucky, but that will just encourage more roots to be produced further back. And the advantage of um, the perlite is that it just frees up the soil so much so you get much better uh, free draining mix and then the plant will do a lot, a lot better. So that's the first two of the titans. And I'm just going to continue now with all the rest of the plants and I'm going to try and keep them as labelled labeled as much as possible because I don't want to lose track of what these are so when it comes to planting them I know what kind of size they're going to get to, a, uh, get to finally so I know what position to put them in because I don't want to put a giant plant in front of a window I don't want to put a small plant where it might get dwarfed by other things. So for sowing these new seeds, I'm going to do a similar thing to what I did with sowing the last lot of seeds. I'm just going to put two seeds in each pot and I'm going to have two uh, pots for each variety. So that will be eight plants potential. Um, I'll probably end, only end up with three or four, possibly less as these are older seeds. Um, they are out of date, it does say so by 2017. So I haven't got 100% success rate guaranteed with this, but uh, we'll see how it goes anyway. And hopefully we'll get something out of it. So that's all my new seeds sown and these plants planted out. I did have a slight accident with this giraffe one here. I did damage the stem, it did snap slightly. Um, it didn't snap off completely, it's still attached slightly. So what it should do is it should heal and it should be fine. Um, it might not be able to get to the, the as big a uh, size as it has potential for because it's got a slightly damaged stem, but it will heal and the uh, stem will be quite strong. And uh, so what I've done is I put it right on the edge of the pot there to keep it in place. Basically, if you get a snapped stem or a damaged stem on a plant, it's very much like a broken bone for humans. You just want to keep it still, stop it from moving, and then after a few days, it will just set again and become solid. And if it's quite a young plant and it's quite vigorous like this, sometimes it can heal almost completely, and you don't notice any kind of difference with the growth. Uh, it just depends on the plant, but quite often they heal quite well, especially with the younger stems. This one here, this one also fell over. It didn't snap, but it has a real tendency to lean now. Um, so I'll just put a little bit of wire around it just to stop it from leaning too much. But what this will do is it will straighten up very quickly because the light will be shining down on it. And what happens with plants is if they get a lot of sunshine, it, um, it breaks down the growth hormones and it means that side of the plant won't grow as much. Whereas the side that is shaded, the plant hormone doesn't get broken down as fast. So that side will grow faster and that will just cause the plant to straighten up. And it's just the self uh, writing mechanism that all plants have and it will keep it nice and straight. So this will pop back up probably within a day or two, especially as it's quite young. Uh, if this happened on an older stem that wasn't still growing, it doesn't have much chance of uh, self-writing. But with stems that are growing, they can self-write within a matter of days, some even a matter of hours. So I'm gonna keep these underneath the grow lamps. These lot are gonna go into the propagator, along with the ruby that never germinated, and the two pots of woe. Hopefully I'll get some germination on them. As for my other two plants, I have the Kong, which is still a little bit small, so I'm just going to stay in that pot for a bit, a bit longer. And then I've also got two ruby ones here. These are still also quite small, so they're going to stay in this pot a little bit longer, but they'll be transplanted soon enough. So I'll try and give you guys an update in a few weeks. Hopefully we'll get some really good growth from these. To say I'll keep them underneath the grow lamps, try and get them to grow quite fast. Um, and, until I run out of space there is, so I've only got a limited amount of space for them and as you can see they've already taken up way more space now with the new pots. So these will probably go out onto the balcony soon, somewhere on the balcony that's sheltered but gets plenty of sunshine. And then once they've kind of acclimatised to the outside weather, they'll then go outside in the garden that I'm going to put them in. The balcony is quite a good stop, stop gap because it's quite sheltered on the balcony and it's quite warm with the sun but it's not as warm as shelters inside my flat. So the good stop gap between going outside in the garden and being grown under grow lamps inside a, um, a controlled environment. So I'll give you guys an update soon. Um, these will probably be going out sometime in May into the garden. They can probably go in my balcony in the next few weeks actually because even light frosts don't really affect my balcony. There's enough concrete around the building that it keeps warm enough that if there's a light frost, 
it shouldn't really damage these plants. So they'll be on the balcony for then. Then probably the end of May, maybe beginning of June, just depends how cold the months are. Uh, these will go outside into their final position and hopefully I'll get lots of lovely giant sunflowers this year.